so excited. I am too. Why are you excited today? Let's okay. see if it's for the same reason. E.G. Daily. Yes, that is exactly the same reason. She's coming on our show today. Yes. She is the voice of Tommy Pickles on Rugrats, and also she is... Powerpuff Girls. Yes. Uh, every, Butterpuff. Every, every, but also most of the films of my childhood. She, yeah, had, she had something a, to do with. She's such an incredible career. Uh, yeah, she's a rock star, a recording artist. Literally a rock star. She's lived a million lives. Yeah. And we're going to get into it today on I Hear Voices. I Hear Voices. Hi. Which is kind of fun. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm so Thank good. you for coming and joining <laughs> us. Nice to be here, y'all. Uh, we've we've awesome. very much been looking forward a to legend, having you. A legend, a legend sitting behind the microphone. An icon. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. But I really wanted to cook with you and we didn't That's have... okay. We can still cook. Okay. I actually just want to hang out and cook, cook with cook you. Because I'm a terrible cook. I just like Malibu. Peep- that's my love language when people cook for me and then I get to eat it. See, that's very sweet. That's a wonderful love language. That's, that's a great love language. <laughs> I love that. I don't even know where to start with EG. Oh my goodness. I've got to be honest with you because One we could start and the- see, but there you go. I mean, right yeah. there. So you, you just started us because you just sang something. So we're going to start with your singing career. She just yes. picked. Yes. Perfect. Because uh, yes. it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, oh, the, the, I mean, you've been, uh, I'm not, I'm not even going to get into the go-go stuff yet, which I'm freaking out about. So oh, my go-go tribute song. Yeah. We're not even going to get into, uh, the, that <laughs> yet. Um, but I think we should, should what? Well, no. Want to start from the should beginning? Should we start from the beginning? I mean, I guess the I beginning like, is always no. a good place to start. What is the beginning? That, Please tell me. That's, well, that's what we're going to have to ask you. So where, what is, what is the beginning? How did you start in this business of show? Well, you know, I am not from the, uh, my family was not a Hollywood family. Like my parents are French, Tunisian, North African Jews who migrated here in a trailer. And so I didn't, I wasn't raised in a family where entertainment was in our wheelhouse. My parents just kind of tried to build up their little company. They build fences for a living and window grills, window grills, which we need now. And, um, and so then I didn't know anything about like when I came around, my mother just was like, you're the one. You're the little magic thing. She had like an instinct? Is she intuitive? I think she just, yeah. yeah. I think she saw something yeah. in the realm of like, but all our kids are really artistic. I have, there's five of us, five brothers and sisters. Shoot. I was the baby, but she would just like go to a yard sale and bring crazy instruments home or buy right. like weird little, just weird things and throw them in the house. And one of us or the other would pick it up and start playing or you know, so were you her, all musical really cool. then? All Everybody five learned how to play everything. Wow. None of us were schooled at it. And then my sister's a painter. Though. She was the only like real painter, went to college, master degree in painting. All the rest of us were just like farm animals. We just <laughs> picked up an old dirty guitar and we just like, we just learned how to do things. So yeah. I think for me, I think I just learned uh, uh, art because I didn't have like, I wasn't good with school. So oh, okay. Art was like, it was origin- where, where did your question originate at, though? What was the, where did it start? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, but that seems like where it then just started then with your family. And would you guys all jam together just yeah, as you're learning I mean, your everybody instruments? Yeah, and- just do some kind of music. Or we'd add like a little, I had a band with my brother called Ronnie, called um, Overman. That was like back in the 80s when I was like wearing spandex leopard. And, you know, yeah. So we just do things together. Or my one brother would play bluegrass and the other brother would play something else. So we just... Music was part of our thing. That was like my language too. Like music was easy for me. But what happened was, is I developed my voice because of music, because singing was such a big thing. Uh Because acting, though I had an acting agent, Mm -hmm. um, scared me because it was very much about like how you looked and Mm -hmm. how fake you could be sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, couldn't do it. Sure. And so I felt awkward with that. But music was like, spoke to me. I didn't have to, um, I didn't have to be somebody else at that point. Later in life, I learned how much I like being someone else. Sure. But I like it because I like how you can tap into different things in people by things you connect to in yourself. And so, yeah, everything just, everything becomes a lot more complex in my brain about why I do art, but it's very deep and beautiful for me, all of it. Oh, that's one. So then did you expect to be a musician? I mean, was that the path that originally was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do music. I think I always thought I was going to be a huge pop star, like forever. And even in my choir teacher back in high school was like, when they tell you at the end of the year what they think you're going to be, he was like, you're going to be a huge pop star. And I was like, He's, he knows what's up. He sees it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and then, but I never would have thought, like the voiceover thing was sort of a gift from the goose that laid the golden egg. Like that was like, I, here's the magic. Okay, so one day out of the blue, this guy calls me who I knew is a producer and he's like, do you want to do a musical? It's called Tansy. And um, we, um, We've had it in, on Broadway, and it was being done on Broadway by Deborah Harry. 
Oh wow. Yeah, Harry's classic. Oh my yeah. god. And it and we need a woman who's petite who can sing, who's also physically fit. And it was on Broadway and mm-hmm. they were like and they said it folded on Broadway after three days. Who knows why? Wow, three and, days. Yeah, after three days. So that means all the ships and all this all the Costumes. sets and all yeah. the wardrobes, yeah. everything was already an yeah. entity. And they called this producer called and he goes, DG, do you want to do this musical? And they're shipping the sets to LA. And I was like, all I wanted to do was sing. Okay. I was like, it's a musical? Can I is there a band? And they're like, Yeah, there's a full on band. I'm like, do I have to put the band members together? And they're like, no. And I was like, do I have to pay for the band members? And they're like, no. Because I didn't have, you know, I was like, that you was- were a self-starter. Yeah. And yeah. I, I didn't have the money yet then to put the band together and yeah. pay everybody. But I wanted to be singing. Yeah. So it was like my heart was so connected to the music that I said, it's a musical. I'll do it. I'll do it. That was the reason why I said yes to the play. Because I just love singing so sure. much. It's so, it connects me to something so deep. And wow. So then they ship, so then I get, start rehearsing, and then they tell me, well, you're going to be a female wrestler. So when I had to learn how to be a female wrestler, like head mare, flying head mares, Irish whips, the belly flops, like the whole thing in a wrestling ring. Wow, okay. So, so now I had to learn this crap. So I had to train with this female wrestler, uh, world champion of the world, and then state, world, first world female champion wrestler of the world, and then state champion at the time. So I'm in a ring and on the floor sitting this 80-year-old woman who was the first um, uh, you know, lady, state, wrestler. lady wrestler and the state champion wrestler. So then they started training me and I was like, oh, hell no. This <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, this stuff's going to hurt my back. I was like yeah, yeah, scared. Yeah, yeah. And I don't like to, I was like, oh my God, this is so hard. I'm not good at this. And every day I'd be like, I don't know if I could do this, but I really want to sing. But I don't know if I could do this, but I really want to sing. And, yeah. and then I pushed myself and then I was able to do this wrestling. And I learned this craft. And then the play became like this big hit and won all these awards and moved to the Roxy Theater and became a pay theater thing. And, and out of that play, I ended up getting a major record deal. And out of that play, I ended up falling in love with someone who was really amazing. And out of that play, just everything happened. And so the message of that was, I just kept following what I love so much. Yeah, I just kept saying, yeah. I just want to sing. It wasn't like I want to do the play, I want to act. It was none of that. Sure. But it was like, I just want to sing. That was the golden nugget that led me to the thing that broke my whole career because wow. then at that particular one woman sh- this that particular play called Tansy where I sang in it I got a major record deal so I was signed to A&M Records I got um fell in love like I yep. said yep. yeah and some guy handed me a card and said he handed me a card and said you're really good with your voice you know, because in the play, I had to be a different voice each round of the wrestling match. Okay. So wow. The first round, I was like, <laughs> a baby, like, <laughs> you know that? And then I had to be like, a five, five-year-old, and then I had to be a 10-year-old, and then I had to be a 16-year-old, and then I had to be a grown woman. Wow. So I was like, wow. in that play, I just had to oh be aging. God. And he was like, you're really good at your voices. And he handed me his card, and he said, you should call me. And I was like, well, thank you. You know, I, I never was like, I never thought I was going to be a cartoon or yeah you know, sure and you're a rock star and yeah, you're good about to right. go to a&m and yeah mean. yeah yeah i had a record deal yeah. and i had a record and i toured all over europe with it and i had a number one dance hit all over the world called say it say it and um you can see all these videos are all up on oh, i have seen yeah yeah <laughs> so so end of story he um he sent me on my first audition i wanted to be very respectful to him because you never know and i talk about that i talk about like those are offshoots so, like somebody taps you on the shoulder and is like you should try this thing. Yeah. And like, sometimes we're so fixed on the way we think everything has to be or mm-hmm. look mm-hmm. that you're like, no, no, no. I'm going this way. Yeah. yeah. I'm going this- Especially after you were, you were so in love with the, the singing track that, and you also did so much work supporting that, like learning to wrestle and like doing these things. Yeah. And obviously performing live, like eight shows a week and oh, stuff so like that. It was, my place wasn't eight, but it was a lot of shows. But it's a lot, yeah. but doesn't even matter yeah. if it's six. Like it's yeah. a lot of work to physically work. put yourself on stage like that. Again, it's a and with wrestling and everything. I'm still oh my grabbing God. my it's head around just, how I never saw this show because it sounds like yeah, it's I wish, I wish they'd have filmed it, but it was back a long time ago and they, there were maybe some random clips around. So is this what, it, the early 80s, mid, mid 80s by this point? Yeah, it was probably... Yeah, it was probably early to mid '80s okay. because that was when I got a mate, my A and M record deal. Okay, and then I had a record out with them. But the the beautiful thing was that agent guy ended up being my agent for my whole career until recently in the last few years. Then mm-hmm. I I made a shift just because you know things change. Sure. But but I ended up he sent me on my first audition. 
he was like, you should really try this. And I was like, that's the offshoot I'm talking about. It was like, I could have been fixed and said no, yeah. but I was like, sure, I'll try it. You know, I'll try it. That's Open awesome. to all opportunities. That, those Nothing are the little, that. those are the little universe thing to this. And then that thing that I said yes to ended up turning me back all around to getting all kinds of other career stuff. So like you just never know what the thing is that's going to open the door for your real big magic career. So I went on my first audition. He's like, go on this audition. It's for a little kid. And I was like, my first cartoon audition. I was like, I'm having my condo remodeled today. Can, can we, I'll get you on the next one. And he's like, no, I think you should go on this one. I was like, oh, but I don't want to leave these guys in my place because they're working. They're going to rob for me. And I was like, I didn't know. I was like, yeah. And I ended up like, I ended up telling the workers, like, I'll be right back. I'm just going down the road. Really, I was leaving for an hour to do that. Right, right, right. <laughs> I went to the audition. They showed me a claymation of a little character. I looked at it. I was kind of like, huh. And I remembered the voice I'd been doing my whole life since I was a little girl was like, I'd walk around the playground with my best friend. I'd be like, ah, um, I'm not sure I like that. And so then I thought, that sounds like the voice I've been doing my whole life for that little floppy mouth little character. I did the voice. I went home. The guy goes, you did really well on that audition. You booked the job. That was Tommy Pickles on Rugrats. Oh my God. Wow. So your very first animation audition ever was Rugrats. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's fortuitous. Talk about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the message was like, I listened to the part of me that said, I want to sing. And that I want to sing led me to a show. And that show led me to the agent that then led me to the career that changed my life. Like, yeah. Changed my life. Right. Like, I, I was doing eight series a week. I was like Jungle Cubs, Bagheera. I was like Huey Dewey Louie. I was, she goes for the intellectual type, such as myself, Huey Louie. And then I was like, Tommy Pickles. And then I was Buttercup. She, I'm going to whoop your hiney. Oh, you're naughty. You're a naughty girl. <laughs> your favorite. Yeah. Your favorite. So, you know, it was just like everything that, they need to be up here, by the way. I, we, yeah, we, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to talk to we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, Nox. We'll get Knox. Okay. We'll get Knox on okay. it. Yeah. So the point is like, um, all these things opened up to me because of that following my heart about what made me really happy. So that's what I try to tell people. So would you say that you were raised spiritual, like, or were you spiritual Not throughout this process? Or what was it that spoke to you to say, like, okay, like, I am going to honor this guy and, and go and do this? Because you did it. I think it was, um, I did know that you always want to be respectful to people. Sure. Okay. kind, respectful. Yeah. And he was reaching out to me about something. And I could have been like, no, I'm a pop singer because I was touring and I yeah, had you had a out. deal. Sure, but I think that part of me that always just says, "Stay open, be teachable, be always be teachable." Where are you hearing that from? Is that like a family thing? Did your mom or dad teach this to you? Not really. Okay. I think life I just, experience, pretty much. I think I just like. I think when you come from a good place and you're not coming from a snobby place or um, too cool for school place, that you're 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 more open in that respect. And I just think it came from like. He reached out to me. He was a respectful guy. Yeah. He saw something in me. Yeah. I need to be respectful and check it out. Sure. So That's it was so really cool. as simple as that. But I think that, yeah. I don't, think don't it's always be also teachable. Say you're, you're, the people that are more open to saying yes to things are usually more successful in life than the people that are, that tend yeah. to say no to things because they're more open to new opportunities. Yeah. And also, yeah, because we don't always know everything. Like we think we do. And sometimes we think we do leads you to a very limited path. Like sometimes eh, be open, check that out. And that is the thing I really refer to a lot. Like I did a one woman show, uh, a, one, yeah. a one woman show, but I did a voiceover seminar and I talked, part of the teaching was be, be teachable and be like, listen for the offshoots because the offshoots are like the universe saying to you, I'm going to get you that thing you love, but it's, you're going to go this way first. Yeah. And so success is not linear. It's yeah. not linear. Yeah. And like you have a destiny no matter what. So you might as well be you know, there's all kinds of ways you could try things and you never know. Right. And that particular, yes. And it's like I read later in life. I mean, I've always been a grower. Like I always want to like learn. I, I want to learn how to be comfortable in my skin because life can be hard. Yeah. You know, life is painful. Seriously uncomfortable at times. Seriously life. uncomfortable yeah. and challenging. scary and sure. challenging. And, and, um, and you know, you, you know, if you're not working on your spiritual life, especially in an entertainment career, which huh. can bring you up and knock you down and bring you up and knock you down, which I've had many ups and downs. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my other podcast. <laughs> Vulnerable, it's yeah. called. Don't yeah. plug your other See? stuff here. Don't if plug your other I stuff. I gotta plug it. Yeah, plug it. Crush. What's it called? <laughs> it's called Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I just think if you don't really daily, and I, I do for my kids, like my mission is to constantly teach my daughters who are young adults, yep. 23 and 25, like keep growing. Like sure. 
this breakup with this boyfriend is about where was it making you joyful and what was not making you happy? And if it's not making you happy more than it's making you happy, then it's time for you to really check check it out. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so, and sometimes people stay and not happy so long that they start to think they're depressed and they start to think they're, they're um, need to do drugs or they need to drink liquor all the time because they're so unhappy. And really what it is is, what am I not looking at over there that's making me unhappy? I need to shift it. And so I think my, um, I'm an empath and I'm super, uh, I'm super empathic. And I think I feel everything so much and I feel other people's pain. And it's like my own pain I can't take sometimes. So I want to yeah. do everything I can to constantly nurture, feeling better, feeling more joyful. You need yeah, to fill your cup too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so I want to get there's, into something I know, here there's so because much. you said something yeah. that was very interesting to me. So I'm, I'm going to take it back uh, a question and then we're going to get into some some really cool stuff because yeah. again, we've talked about how there's a number of, well, we'll start with your film career. So there's a number of films we got to get into. Okay. However, you said something really interesting when it, uh, it came to seeing your first kind of animatic or claymation of yeah. what was going to happen on Rugrats. You said, oh, this reminds me of the voice I used to do when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So- were you doing voices the whole time you were growing up? I mean, as a little kid, were you just doing multiple voices just with your friends? Yes, I was. I was doing like imitating little uh, little kids' voices. I would like- My daughter does that. Yeah. She's five. That was like the beginning seeds of like, that's why I say like, watch your children because they're showing you things about who they are and what they can do. Even if it's a weird thing, like I'd always say like, jokingly like people are double jointed yeah. or they flip their eyelids inside out or whatever the weird trick is. I'm like- yeah. Watch what your children are doing because that is their gift. Like my nephew um, used to go through the trash bins in the alleys and he would bring home like disgusting, dirty, like weird things, like metal, weird thing with rust and worms and bugs and, and a weird little tire. And we would be like, Robin, you can't put that in the house. Like you just yeah. can't. And, and, you know, he ended up being like a very rare, like, he builds things for music videos and movies oh, okay. of like a, a weird goggle thing with a weird futuristic thing. Like yeah. he, he ended he's up being like a one of a- Production designer? Yeah, he's yeah. like a production designer. He has a whole warehouse thing that he Shh. works in and people hire him to do this. And it's like, we take our kids sometimes and we were like, no, you're going to follow the family tradition. I'm guilty sure. of it. Honestly, I'm guilty of it. My daughter yeah. does these voices too sometimes, not all the time, but like- she will do it, sh and I've seen her do it. And there's been times when I said, "No, that you need to pronounce it clearer." And I'm beating myself up, but, but I'm learning something. This is a teachable moment. I'm See? teachable. Teachable moment. But, yeah. Thank you. And AG. also because sometimes little kids. The reason why I booked Rugrats was because my Tommy, my Tommy Pickles, talks very broken and very unclear. He's right. like, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, my mom, uh, he, she's really." And, uh -huh. you know like everything yeah. is weird and broken yeah. up and sometimes not clear and that's why they like my voice for that job and yeah. so the beauty of kids perfectly. voices is that they're not perfect as yeah. we like you know so yeah um that's what makes you uh, that's a in, a in a separate part of the conversation too but like that's what makes her such a great voiceover actor in my opinion too is that she's so authentically a child. In, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, but again, Tommy. one of the things we constantly hit on the show, we talk about, uh, it's our mantra, you and I talk about this all the time, is there is a very big difference between childish and childlike. Yeah. So it's something Nail, very totally. childlike about you that is so, uh, it, it, <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so attractive in the industry, especially when it comes to animation, <laughs> because you can put your mind in, in, in a, the mind of a child, you can become a child. Again, childish, not good. Childlike, something that should never be lost. Yeah. And I something agree. that, is rewarded in our side of the industry here, especially when it comes to animation. So I think so. A perfect, the embodiment of, of incredible, uh, the, the, the combination of the wisdom and childlike is pretty awesome. Well, and so what I what I found hey, really interesting too true. is that you had a very adult, you know, film career as oh, well. Oh, like, we're getting yeah. into it. Okay. Although I guess with Pee Wee's Playhouse, that oh, was- Oh, you just said one out loud. Okay, we're jumping <laughs> right in. Because there's big a adventure? whole bunch here. Pee Wee's Big Pee -wee's Adventure. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yes, I grew up with this movie as well. I obsessed wow. over how it, beautiful you were and yeah. but it was also dancer. just a great film all the way around talk about childlike yeah. yes uh, there was a, the very few films even now to this day can a, a kid sit down and watch an adult sit down and watch and get yeah. two completely different experiences but both enjoy it immensely and certainly at that yeah. time there wasn't like the nickelodeon initiative and disney no. wasn't even doing programming so it wasn't like that concept of like no. yeah we need this this needs to happen but 
Pee-wee's movie. I remember watching that yeah. with my family. Yeah, my well, he was like, he brought a whole thing, and he did. Then Tim Burton was found from that. That was his first big feature film. So you know what I mean? It was a very iconic. Now it's like thirty something years old, but it's still like huge. Yeah. But Ichi, I gotta think that you must know so many amazing people in this oh, industry. I, oh, I mean, you yeah. grew up here. I love that. You yeah, grew up grew here, up and see, that's the thing is like I know that. I know people who, I, I grew up in New York and like I'll talk to other people who started young in the business and they're like, oh yeah, we started in New York. And there's always a little bit of jadedness. Well, we, we, both, we were both started in Connecticut and then go in New York and we'll look at each other and be like, bah. Yeah. Like we know what we've done. We, we've were, done. we rode Man. the train we for did, two We took hours buses to get down and the train and then we meet people who are like, I grew up in California. And it's such yeah. a different vibe. We're like, yeah. oh yeah. It is I, a little different. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, how did you, and in speaking of this, this, this childlike sort of, magical wonderment like fairy like wonderment yes. that keeps you young you know it really does it's something that i actually appreciate about still enjoying going to disneyland like i went a couple days ago with my kids and like there's there's something to the magic of all, of all of it where I, I i don't want to push that away from my mind no it's awesome there's and certain things yeah being that whole little you know it's really funny because the i never i like literally like i hang out with my my assistant she's like She's like my daughter's age, but like we call each other besties, you know, because I don't know. I just think, um, you know, and the other thing was is I did this one woman show called Listen Closely where I actually talk to myself and myself as an adult. So I talk to my inner child, EG, and my wow. grown up, EG. Yes. And so half the time it was like, we have to be really nice to that guy. Act sexy. We want him to like us. And then my inner child's like, but I don't like him. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, to me, oh the child God. speaks the truth. And yeah. so you have to stay really connected to that inner yeah. child. And that's why that one woman show that I did was all about my journey and how much I battled. It wasn't easy. I battled like the voices that were like, oh, we're at this really cool party and everybody who's anyone is here and we have to act really cool. And we have to, my little kid's like, I oh, guess that shit. I won't just have fun, you know. Like, yeah. you know, it's just like it, it's so important to constantly stay tapped into, like, where are you being real and where are you being fake? And all the best conversations come when I when I wasn't worried about how I was looking and when I was having a good time. And I noticed people were really attracted to that when uh -huh. I was being my most. Whenever I'm dressed up, like super dressed up, and I have my makeup and my hair, and you know how this is when yeah. you get all done up. Yeah, I'm not comfortable. No, right. it's so I'm uncomfortable. Not, I'm not comfortable. And so what happens is half my personality goes away. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, that's why sometimes I'll deliberately wear something like I went to a dinner party with girlfriends and they were all wearing fancy dresses and high heels and I was like wearing something like this. Yeah. And a big bulky sweater. And I had more fun than ever because I'm of not course. trapped in this weird like. Yeah. Because you're in touch with your inner child. Yeah. yeah. My How wife will do something like that. My wife yeah. will, will, will say we're going out to dinner and she'll put on her shoes and she'll go. The stopwatch has started. Um, and I go, what do you mean? She's like, because you get, you have a finite amount of time in these shoes before they're hard. <laughs> so she's like, it's started. Let's go. And it's like, all right. It's like, you it's like, where she's like exactly, which she does 90% <laughs> of the time. But she's like, I want to put on high heels tonight. And then she tells, she'll look at me. She's like, the clock, the clock has begun. Yeah. Let's go. It takes, your, gonna it hurt. takes the fun out. It does. So yeah. the and you know what? Child. That's not to, and honestly, that's not to discourage women who, who find themselves, because there are young girls that grow up wanting to wear the high heels sure, okay because yeah, like course. i have two daughters i have a five-year-old and i have one that just turned three the the one that's turning three literally has to be wearing a tiara on her head that's good or she throws a huge she's tantrum a pink girl. my wife's the same girl. way she is yeah. a pink girl yeah. she's a bubbles she's a bubbles and yeah. my other one is is a um it's not a bubbles <laughs> she's the other two <laughs> they're usually opposite total opposite they are they really are opposite and she um she likes science, and she asked me to buy her on Amazon the a, like a human head. Don't laugh. What a human head that scientific experiment from Nat Geo. Mm -hmm. that, oh like, yeah, where you can take it apart. apart. And you go, oh yeah, oh, are you but kidding? They're five. awesome. But she's but five. that's great. And I'm like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And yeah, we think so she's weird. she's into she's germs. Be a brain surgeon, or right? Yeah, she's like into yeah. germs. She's into molecules. Oh yeah, she's, she's gonna like, be she's gonna go the science route. That's awesome. Wow. I know, and that's weird for me and my husband, who are both artists, and we're like, well, cool. She's gonna be a scientist. Yeah, you know, that's pretty great. It's like the bulb of a flower, and you. You go into a garden or nursery and there's like little round balls. They're bulbs for flowers. And then you pick them up and then you plant them and you don't know what kind of flower it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your job is to put it in the dirt, to water it, to give Nurture it love. Nurture it and let it grow. And then it turns into this magnificent flower. That's really cool. But you cool. can't make it be a different flower. Yeah. You have to let it be the flower. So how much of Tommy is your inner child? Like That's what a good is question. A lot. At Tommy okay. Pickles is a lot. Uh, I really... I really resonate with Tommy Pickles because to me, 
He has a lot of compassion. He really cares okay. about others. He cares about people's feelings. Um, he wants everybody to win. He's fun. He's adventurous. And he's a leader. But he's not a jerk. Mm -mm. He's a kind leader. He wants everyone to feel included. And honestly, to be honest, that's kind of me. I like. Yeah. I want everybody to win. I want everybody to feel appreciated and loved. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. And I think that's Tommy Pickles. So I, f I feel very connected to Tommy Pickles. Now, when did Rugrats start? When when was this that you actually got the show? It's been that was back in the eighties. That was third. <laughs> wait, that was wait. It's having. It, it just had its thirty year anniversary. So yeah, I'm wearing the shirt by the way. Thirty year anniversary. Thirty years. Now you're wearing my shirt. That's me. Yep. Yeah. So th I mean, so other cute. than The Simpsons, it's got to be one of the longest running. It's huge. Yeah. It's Certainly a children's. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And now we just started our reboot and I'm on season two of the brand new reboot. So who knows yeah. how many seasons we're going to do and now. And where, where's the reboot on? The reboot is on Paramount um, Plus. It's on Paramount Plus. Okay. Yeah. And the reboot is so great because now it's all CGI. Yeah. And they're actually, they moved, um, they recast some of the adult characters. All the babies are the same characters, same cast. That's but great. But some of the adult characters, they brought in some celebrity talent from popular TV shows and stuff. But the beautiful thing is they're making the, their millennial. The people that were grown up on Rugrats, like the little yeah. kids, they're now young parents. Yeah. Me. I'm not a young parent. You're a young parent. You're a kids. pretty young it's parent. Beautiful. You're a young <laughs> parent. Yeah, and so what's happening is the young parents are now going to watch Rugrats, but now they moved all the Rugrats elements to like cell phones, bloggers, right, dating okay, apps. Sure. So we brought it to today's time, so it's going to be very relatable, but they're bringing all the coziness of the Rugrats, like the family and the familiarity and all the different diversity of all the family members like it's a very beautiful show like it embraces and betty has now come out as a member of the lgbtq community which we how can you not love a show that is embracing of everyone? course of course yeah, yeah. Is, there wait i there yeah there's somebody who's out on this on, yeah, the, on the new one betty okay great i need to see this then yeah <laughs> yeah i gotta i've gotta watch and the new one as so well it's so awesome like everybody that's what i mean everybody's included they're really yeah. a, they're just really embracing everybody's different cultures yeah. they did a special called traditions for the holidays which was all about how everybody celebrates christmas yep. and different people do different traditions and they kind of tapped into different people's wanting to make sure everybody felt special on their christmas the That's way they great. celebrate whether it's jewish or christian or catholic or whatever is that different from the rugrats that was t uh 2d i guess you no i mean they always kind of did that but now it's now they're just widening. Don't laugh. I'm you sorry. Said, I hear laugh. It sounded like you, you said tootie. It sounded like yeah. you said tootie to me. And then it, 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 <laughs> yes. my, my, my brain needed to translate. Oh, she's saying 2D. Two as in two as dimensional. In I was like, you know, was, remember when don't. it was 2D? I didn't. I was like, wait. <laughs> That's a good name for a dog. Facts of life. Here, that was facts of life. Tootie. That's a whole different yeah, thing. Yeah, tootie. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's <laughs> sorry. So we cute. often well, we see something shiny and get distracted. It is how we do it, it here is. on I Hear Voices. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, it's very similar in, as in the in the two D, in the two D, in the two D version, in the two D version. Uh, yeah, it's kind of similar in that they still they always kind of did things special for holidays to kind of show everybody's different cultures. But now they can do it more um, beautifully, magnificently because the animation is so spectacular. Sure. Like, Everything looks like when you see a giant Pixar feature and the carpet looks real and the water looks real and the mud looks real. Everything looks so real and beautiful. So now I have to I have yeah. to talk about something very briefly here because my, yeah. my brothers and I, um, we are we love movies, we love TV, okay. and we grew up speaking in quotes. Oh, I love that. And one of the things we quoted more than anything was Valley Girl. So I, 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 we won't get too much into Valley Girl, but just letting you know, it was hugely important in the Fergal household. What was your favorite quote that. from Valley yeah, Girl? What was oh, it? there's so many of them. Um, one, one of the ones we, because the, the whole cadence of the speech. So one of the things we're learning on I Hear Voices, especially when you want to become a voiceover actor, we heard some uh -huh. great advice from Miley. She said one of the first things she teaches people is just listen to everybody around you. Mm -hmm. Listen to their voices. Try to understand their yeah. cadence. Get there. So... The Valley dialect, which is what it was back in the which 80s. Which nobody probably knew about, right? Uh, valley unless Girl you were, was like a thing of the 80s. If you lived in California, you then knew you got to exactly. like, certain people talk like this, and you're just like and surfers. It was take and take off, you know, and, and yeah. one, one of the lines we loved was um, just the bad guy in the yeah. movie just yeah. walked up to, Nick, you know, they're like, and you, I think you like walked up sure. to him and said, um, you know, she's going to take you back. And he's like, of course, no other Val dude can touch me. Yeah, I love that. And it was just one of the Michael greatest Bowen. lines ever. Yeah. So my Holy brothers Val and I will dude. be like, you know, it's like, hey, you going out with that girl tonight? Be like, yeah, no other Val dude can touch it. <laughs> we um, love that movie. Oh and, my then, God. and then there's the scene, not to get too much into it. Then there's the scene where he goes and he hooks up with your characters like a revenge against his ex. Yes. And then kind of walks out on you and does this weird hand gesture. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, that's all he does. He does this surfing weird that with my brother's yeah, not looking hilarious. for him to just go. Yeah, the best. <laughs> and so it was, and it also introduced us to the Plimpsolls, which was one of the greatest the bands of the 80s And ever. I just did a live during, towards more recently, but we did a live uh, show at the Viper Room. We put together Cameron Dye, who plays his buddy. Yeah. Uh, called me and then this other guy called and said, would you do some Valley Girl soundtrack songs? We're going to do a Valley Girl oh, that's awesome. night at you the Viper Room. That. How are you I, on not, that? I'm not on the, was, the chain. You don't this even is know. Why I'm, this is why, <laughs> well, this was, is why social media exists. It was exists. scary because COVID was still up and people were like, I can't believe you're going to go play live. But you know, I wore a mask until I got on the room. stage. Yeah, I wore a mask and people were kind of far and down. But yeah. we, I did songs like Million Miles Away <gasps> and we did songs like... Um, <sighs> Um, just the cla- the most classic songs from that movie. And somewhere, I think I posted a little of me, I'll stop the world in you know, with the, oh, oh, God. The soundtrack for Valley Girl was one of the greatest soundtracks ever. Like uh, of all best. time. The it best was ever. Unbelievable. And so that night, playing all those Valley Girl songs, people were losing it. Oh. Yeah. Because the band, we had two of the original Plimsolls in that band that night. Oh. And Cameron Dye and I. So it was really cool. You can find that online somewhere. I posted a little clip of it, See, but this is but you can find this the entire. Media. Now I, I don't get why know people you can find media. the whole thing. And I what about your what about your one woman show? Which, by the way, I saw yeah. you oh. post a lot about it. Yeah. I think you've been posting. Did you? Some do bits we send you a link? I'll make sure that Ace. Yeah, gets no, a please do. That'd be amazing. It's an I can't hour wait. and fifteen minutes. The one woman show is called E.G. Daily. No, it's called Listen Closely. Okay. E.G. Daily's one woman autobiographical musical. And the reason why is because I literally wrote my whole career. I've done a lot of albums. I've had a lot. of a out. lot of albums. Yeah, that's, yeah. And I literally, as I was writing these songs, a lot of them were autobiographical, right? Mm-hmm. So I have this boyfriend who shot himself in the head. There was one moment in the, and I talk about that. It's not all heavy, but there's moments that are heavy. Sure. And there's moments that are funny and light. But I pretty much let it all out because that's how I roll. Radical honesty about everything. Because yeah. I like people to, I like people to get a little uncomfortable so that they actually go, oh my God, that makes me so uncomfortable. Oh my God, I can't take it. Oh my God, I feel the same way. To me, that's magic when you can actually get someone to go, I've had that same experience. I don't talk about it. Sure. And there's a lot of healing to be done. So in this show, yeah, it's called um, Listen Closely. And that's why I talked about um, throughout the show, I do a lot of different voices. I play my mother who talks like this. And then I play, she goes, why did you shave your legs? You know, like this French, (laughs) Tunisian Jew. And then I do like my brother, Ronnie. You know, I do his voice. And I just, I do all these characters in the moment show. Talk to myself, talking to all these people that I grew up with. And- and it's very profound. And there's moments that are very deep. There's moments that are very sad. But literally, you'll be laughing hysterically one moment, and then you'll be crying the next moment because I just let it all hang out. That's much. amazing. That is honestly, that is yeah. a, that's that's always a. And fantasy. I'm half naked while I'm doing it. Well, so. we like that. <laughs> we like that on I Hear Voices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's, uh, here's the thing about E.G. Right. So I uh, I haven't gotten nearly enough in person time with E.G. in my lifetime. We've crossed paths. Yeah. I actually thought that Will had had a lot of time with her. It turns out. We cross paths as well. We do. You see people at conventions, or we did a show together, and neither of us can remember what it was. But it was back in the day. Yeah. But the Something one animated. thing that has always come about when people have mentioned EG's name, it's it's not even just. It's like, oh yeah, EG. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I like that. it's That's like she's character. the coolest person on the planet. Like yeah. anytime EG's name is mentioned, it's always like, what? Oh. EG? Yeah. That's funny. I'm telling I love you. That. Anytime I your love your that. name is uttered, there's this like. There's this impactful way of like, well, shoot, I need to meet her someday. Yeah. I want to meet her. Like legit. <laughs> like I've always, it's been on my bucket list. I love and that. now you're here. I love you're that. on. Well, I hear it's also looking and- at your, I mean, uh, uh, forget about being a cool person. Just looking at the resume from all the shows, movies, albums. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, are you nuts. proud of your work? Yeah. Like, are you, do you look at your yeah. resume and be like, you know who makes me proud? You know, when I forget a little bit, because it's easy sometimes when, of course, we have moments, as you know. <laughs> when things are awesome and you're working, yeah. everybody wants you sure. and everybody's hiring you. Like, I, I'm always want to do more work. And luckily, Rob Zombie will call me and have me do his movies all the time. Oh, you say. know, Rob. But to yeah. me, yeah. I just call to him me, Robbie. it's like when I forget, because sometimes there's moments where things are slow and, and you're like, I need to get more work. And what makes me remember is I literally go on YouTube and I, I have a YouTube, so you guys can subscribe. You usually, but subscribe. It's not just that, but. On my YouTube, when I post videos or music, like I did three new music videos during COVID because I was so like stir crazy to make art. So I managed to get one guy to come in with a mask and we filmed it and I edited it with him. But when I go back, like I just did it yesterday and I look, I pulled it up. I look at my YouTube comments and these people rock my world and you know who you are, Paul. You know who you are because they say the most amazing things about my work. And then I remember like I have made an impact. I have made 
an impact. A because, crazy impact. But this I forget. You forget because sometimes things get slow and you get, you start to think, oh, I got to grind, I got to hustle. And it's like, no, I, I already did the work. Yeah. Just start to reach out, call my friends, say, I need more work. I want to do some more fun movie roles. I wanted this, I want that. And people think you're always working, so they don't call you sometimes. But we're always looking for new opportunities sure. to work. And I just love to work. But what I'm saying is, right? Yes. That's what I mean. <laughs> yes. But, but I'll tell you what. When I read those comments and when I read the comments on my TikTok from fans and when I read the comments on, did you do one of those things too where you're like, yes, that's not my, my name. name. Yeah, yeah. He didn't you even know just, about it until yesterday. Of course yesterday. not. I don't know social media. No, it's okay. not a thing Well, okay. So Will is, Will is not on social media and that's good. It's good for him. It's, good. it's healthy for him. No social media, no on camera. I just do voiceover and now I get to talk to awesome people and I'm a pretty that's happy amazing. guy. Yeah. And we protect, we protect him at all costs because that's what we want for him is the healthiest frame of mind That's for that. amazing. Yeah, it's hard. You get caught in I enjoy it now. I try to do it because I, li I like it. It's fun. Well, it's so fun for people in the millennial and younger yeah. Gen Z mm -hmm. that are, 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 you know, approaching. Because honestly, the Rugrats love it um, too much. merch, <laughs> the Rugrats merch is everywhere amongst Gen everywhere Zs. Now. Sure. Heelys. They just yes. sent me Heelys. They're doing a Rugrats Heelys? Yeah, we got some. They sent them over to us. Heelys, are those the, those the, the things wheels? with the wheels? Yeah. Yeah. Really cute yes. tennis shoes. Puma's got shoes out now. They've got all this merch. Yeah, they're They've everywhere. Got Rugrats and sweaters. is everywhere. It's awesome. No, it's really great. It's come back yeah. in a big way. Well, because Y2K mm -hmm. fashion and Rugrats is kind of embedded into Y2K. It's yeah. on the earlier side of Y2K, but it, it what I yeah. find interesting, and this happened with KP as well, was that once you're rolling for a while, mm -hmm. you're transgenerational. Yeah. Right? So yeah. like you yeah. have made an impact yeah. on like many generation generations. Generation after generation after generation. Yeah. 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 And I love that. And I, yeah. to me, I love that that I will go to a con, as you know, and we'll have, I'll have a table, this like this big, our tables are about this big, and I will put Tommy Pickles, Buttercup, different cartoon characters. And then I move into like Valley Girl, Peebus Big Adventure, the pop culture. Yeah. Then on the other end of the table are like the Rob Zombie, Candy, Sex Head, all those characters. And then, then I get a line of people that will come to my table, lots. Sure. And they come. And you get the kids over here going, Tommy Pickle and Buttercup and the moms too sometimes. And then you get the dads who are like, oh my God, I wanted to marry Dottie. That's Did me. Did you want to marry me Of too? course, of course. But you know the drive in with me. Anyway, oh anyway so, so there, Dottie. there's I'm Dottie. Just, I'm absorbing Dottie. that a little bit here. <laughs> and I then, know. So then you get those people and then the moms that were like Valley Girl fans in that genre yeah, of, of women. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, oh my God, I loved your character. You were the best. And then you get... The rocker dads and the dads are like, Rob Zombie, we love your character. Or some of the rocker moms. Sure. But it's like, it's so awesome to me to see this beautiful, which is why. Patchwork of yeah, like humanity. Just, to me, it's like, yeah. I, I, and that's why to me, like, when it's slow and when it's difficult, when, when people are forgetting, like, call. We're, people think we're, we're yeah. always, I used to go look in the, my agents when I was younger too, used to go like, they're looking for an Elizabeth Daly type. And they would have my face and I'd be like, my How about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that yeah. happened to me. That happened to me hell? one time. Yeah. They were like, "We're looking for a Kim Possible type." Exactly. I didn't get it. Well, did you? Have you ever done the? Uh, <laughs> right. Have you ever done the what? run the run the what is it the the old adage in Hollywood where they say to so you use yourself so you say it starts with who's Will Friedle. Then it's get me Will Friedle. Then it's get me a younger Will Friedle. Yeah. Then it's that's who's the Will Friedle. <laughs> so that's that's the way it runs. But I would oh, very man. quickly like to read just some of. Um, the, the, so some of the soundtracks that you've been a part of yeah. are insane. Thief of Hearts, Scarface, yeah. Breakfast Club, yeah. Summer School, Better, Better Off, off Dead, dead. Yeah. Will's Childhood, Will's Childhood, Will's Childhood, Will's <laughs> Childhood. I mean, insane. I it just like involved in all these amazing yeah. films. That's just that's just as part of the soundtrack. Yeah. That's not then the films you were in. That's not then the animated series you've done. That's not then your own personal albums. These are just, oh yeah, these multi-award winning films that were so important to everybody. Yeah, I was part Thanks. of all those. That's awesome. Well, I mean, again, it's the difference, I guess, between working and having a career. I mean, you've had a career that's- I love to decades. make art. I don't care. If it's slow in acting, I'll go do make a record. If it's slow in music, I'll go do an animated project. If it's slow in that, I'll produce something. Uh, if it's, I do not wait. My art dictates my joy. I have to keep doing art because if not- I'll spiral into, I'm not important, nobody cares, I'm not making as much money. It's like all this stuff that will bring you down, I have to remember, if you sing, sing. And if you sing in your house and it gives you joy, sing in your house. Because every time I pick up my guitar to start singing, I, my, it's funny, Ace, my girl, I love her. Um, 
Ace, my assistant, she'll be like, how can we never hear you singing? You're not singing ever. What's that? And it's like, because I go through moments where I like, I, it's hard for me to get myself to want to sing because I haven't had any projects in the music realm. But then the sec, now I have to do something next week where they wanted me to sing two songs. So that yeah. means I have to sing. I have to pick up the guitar and I have to yeah. practice. And then, so when I'm in the car now, I start warming up the voice and then I remember like, oh my God, I love this. Mm. Oh my God, this makes me so happy. You it's, get like a rush. You get like a I just feel warmth like, that well, comes singing, you, yeah. singing does something to your chemistry too. If you're a real singer, there's something that happens when you really get to where you're really singing. You get is, to the I'm zone. Not, yeah. You get to that zone. I where, have a complicated where, relationship with it, but yeah. Do you? Well, you know when you sing a lot and your voice almost gets a little huskier and it starts to get really like rich and then your voice gets bigger and fatter and fuller, the more you sing. Mm. And when I get to that place where I've been singing a lot, you can always tell because my speaking voice gets a little huskier. I just feel like I'm cl- I'm plugged back in to s- much bigger something. And that that's that's my connection. So the voice is my connection, but when I sing is really my connection. So That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, ta- speaking of animation, because we ask this of everybody that comes on here, wh- when you were growing up, were you a fan of cartoons? I wasn't really that girl. I mean, I wasn't really... I Doing didn't... voices, but not watching cartoons. Yeah. That's I cool. Wasn't... Yeah, I wasn't really like an anime person. I didn't really go to con- conventions or cons. Mm-hmm. Did you? No, I was, I was a theater kid. Okay. So for me, cons were very new to me. Yeah. Did you know about cons? Oh, yeah. I used to go to Star Trek conventions when okay. I was younger. I'm oh, a nerd. Really? You did? I'm you a were a total con- nerd. Yeah. You were oh, nerdy? Absolutely. Oh, I'm still I love nerdy. that. Yeah. So I'm he's nerd. genuine. Absolutely ge- a genuine nerd. Yeah. See, there's like, there's, I didn't do any of that. I was like, um, what did I do? I was like a rocker. I was a yeah. rock star. I was yeah. like a rock star in my own mind. And then I became more of a real one. But I, I literally was like, I was playing clubs on the Sunset Strip when I was 16. And yeah, what are your I was favorite? Ask. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Now, yeah. were you there watching like the Go-Go's as they were exploding in LA? And my there mom for all that fam- kind of stuff? Yes, because my mom owned a famous club called the Anti Club, which was... Uh, Wait, your mother owned that club? Yeah. Didn't Did they, you know didn't that they, Didn't they, they... They broke like a, a huge number of bands. It, I mean, it was oh, like... Oh, so many bands. So it my was mom... was like CBGB or, the, or Whiskey out yeah, here, right? Yeah, it was right? like I mean, Madame Wong's or the Whiskey or yeah. any of those. It was an underground club. So we had people like Chris Isaac played there. I think the Black Flag and X Scene. And anyway, so, um, so yeah, the club was really popular and we had all kinds of bands. It was also rockabilly and punk bands. It was a punk club. And I used to go there and, uh, you know, and um, kind of be a celebrity, like hidden away bartend, you know, for stuff. And then that, those were the days when I started playing. Like my sister would be like, you should pick up your guitar and go play a set. So that was when I started doing my, I was 16 or, yeah. but I started with playing. With your brother too, you said? You that had particular one I actually played by myself. Wow. With, so I started playing at my mom's. Some of the, I did other ones too, but that's where I really started. To, I couldn't even play guitar that well yet, but I started to really push myself to do live shows because it would... That scared me, but then I started to get better and better with playing and singing at the same time. Yeah. Because now we're getting into stuff I love here, talking about the punk scene, so. Are you into punk, too? Oh, yeah. He's into punk, too. Which I love is you str- So he is nerdy, but he's also very cool. See, you're very, you're, that's He's a man scary. of all I'm a things. renaissance nerd, yeah. is what I would a say. A renaissance nerd. I am a renaissance nerd. But a no, rena- when you have older brothers. A renaissance punk nerd. You do. Well, we, we yeah. were, I went from kind of the older school punk scene, which was kind of growing in, in the New York scene a little bit. And, and the L.A. scene at the time. Yeah. But then it kind of transitioned in my family to more of kind of the CBGB scene. So we loved like the Ramones and television. Yeah. And, and ben, I think they and, might have played there too. Which knows? is insane. And then, yeah. then you get into the clash and kind of more of the British stuff. But then yeah. we got more kind of indie alternative, which was more like Husker Du and the Hootie Gurus oh, yeah. and bands like that that were coming out of like Minneapolis and things like that. So, But L.A. at the time mm-hmm. had one of the most amazing New York scenes. And this was really right cool. kind of very post yeah. the California sound when it was the Eagles and, and stuff yeah, like right that. Yeah, right before. It was like Madame Wong's. Yeah. And Coconut Teaser broke a lot. I pl- I had a residency there. I would play there once a week, packed and lines around the block. Because wow. I, I had a metal band. I heard that. I had a metal band called Slave. So it was a, a heavy metal uh Heavy metal band. So you're talking right in the 80s, Motley Crue, kind well, of, that, all these kind of They were my neighbors. And really? I was going to say, who was your first boyfriend? We I mean, must have been a rocker. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of those rockers with the skinny the skinny jeans. All yeah, the oh, eyeliner yeah, their legs were this big, but I thought it was <laughs> all they, they, leather, were, they were the girl pants. Yes. That was my, those were my tribes. I mean, Motley Crue literally lived, a, I had a con, I had a little apartment across the street on the, 
right up the street from the whiskey yeah. on Clark Street. And Motley Crue guys were just breaking and they had an apartment. They all lived in one apartment. Yeah. And I remember like Vince was starving and I was like, come on over. And I opened up a can of beans for him. And, you know, wow. because- feeding guys, Vince Yeah, Neal. beans. <laughs> Dude, you are iconic. How funny so is that? Iconic. And I'm I think I hung out with Nikki back then. And you, know, you have Nikki's been like, around for some of the coolest parts all of LA. Guys. It was a really cool time. And that was like my, I knew all the guys from like Poison and I'd met them at a party. And then it, they were like, come to our rehearsal. And the rehearsal studio was this big. And I was sitting on the floor because there was no room to sit anywhere else. Um, like it was on. a very iconic time. It was like what? Poison, Cinderella, Motley Crue, Rat. Uh, Rat. <laughs> EG's different. EG, EG is. is very okay, special. Okay, so we, to bring it back, to bring it back okay, to you. Okay, so I want to get to in. Powerpuff Girls. Yes, right? let's go to Powerpuff okay. Girls. Yeah, How okay. did you come up with your voice for Powerpuff Girls? Let's jump right into it. Well, when we auditioned for Powerpuff Girls, we did it at Hanna-Barbera. And they didn't know what they wanted. They didn't know what they wanted for Buttercup. They didn't know what they wanted for Bubbles or Blossom. Huh. So what they did was they brought us all in and they heard the different textures and they had the age range. So it was like, Buttercup talks like this and she's raspy and she's feisty and she talks a little fast and she says like, mm, you know, things like that. And so they recorded us for the audition and then that was the audition. And I don't know if you know how this works, but literally like seven years later, I got a call saying, remember that thing you auditioned for? Wait, seven? Like, or like a crazy amount like, of time? Like, I'm saying like somewhere like a lot of years. Like wow. five, could have been five years, could have been seven. But it years. wasn't the next week. No, it was years later. Wow. wow. So then I get a call saying, remember that thing you auditioned for? And that guy, Craig McCracken, who's a genius, mm -hmm. who really only looked like he was about 17 back then. Like we were like, he's just a kid. This guy. And, and then we, they said they picked up, they, they picked up a series on that. So then- the very beginning of that show was like Tara Strong was like mm -hmm. my one of my besties, and Kathy Cavadini, who mm -hmm. I adore. They started just to kind of like Fit play with the differences of our, our voices. Mine was a little feisty and a little, you know, edgy. You're feisty. <laughs> and, you just made her day. And uh, you made her day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so and Tara could do that adorable little yeah. baby voice, and and Tara's amazing, and. Kathy does that more. She's very more practical and more the leader, which is kind of like our personalities anyway. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> it's and funny so, how that works. Yeah, yeah too. so they just kind of, yeah, they just kind of put it together. Well, you know, we had Lisa Schaefer in here, who I'm uh -huh. sure you've worked with, yeah. right? Yeah. And Lisa directed us primarily um, on Kim Possible. It was like her first big yeah. thing yeah. she was talking about. Oh. And she was saying how uh, really the most important thing about voiceover actors and her casting them is that they are an actor first. Mm -hmm. But that they can authentically play the character, yeah. I think, is what I took away from that. Yeah. yeah. You know, in a really unique way yeah. and that they find their way into it. So, I mean, that was, I mean, she's a bit different from, you know. Yeah. From Tommy. Yeah. Well, the thing is, really, the best actors are the best voiceovers. I mean, the more, there are, the voice disagree. actors, yeah. voice <laughs> actors are literally some of the best actors on the planet. Hugely because talented. they can do so much with their voice. I think they're a bit unsung too. They this are. This is a term they that are. they are. They are unsung. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah, very much. Well, there's yeah. also- Because they're not working. Like Tara's recently doing something on, on camera and I'm like, yeah. yeah, go, like get it. You Kevin Conroy finally got to play Batman on camera. For, for, oh, for, yeah. He played Bruce Wayne for the first time and he was Batman for yeah. 30 years. Yeah. On um, the DC, you know, whatever they, was, it, yeah, was it the Flash Batman yeah, crossover yeah, yeah. Arrowverse yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And so Kevin, it was like, you want to play Batman? And he's like, yeah, I'm a Shakespearean trained stage yeah, actor. So that's what yes, I, mean. I can play this. And, yeah. and that's what I mean. Like you will never find more talented actors. So sometimes people will say, which is why I did a voiceover seminar, people, because people will say like, I have a really good voice. Yeah. Everyone says my voice is good. And or I do funny voices. Especially at cons. I do yeah. funny yeah. voices. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be like, that's awesome. That is one of the first important things. However, you better be the best actor out there. Yeah. And you, most of the time people that can sing really well are great voice actors because you you have to be a great actor and if you can sing then you know how to like play with your voice like yeah. mm -hmm. when i first got rugrats this is trivia that sometimes people don't know they had already cast someone as tommy pickles really mm -hmm. nobody knows it's a weird trivia but that's why they were recasting because they wanted to switch the voice they okay. didn't they weren't the sure. texture wasn't they wanted more something different okay they wanted more authentic baby sounding mm -hmm. okay which is kind of my thing. So basically they called me and they said, we want you to come in and do this voice. So I booked it and I thought I was just going to do it. And then they said, no, no, no. What you have to do is they'd already done a whole season oh, with Lord. this other girl oh. and they already animated it or starting animated. So I had to come in and match her. Oh, you had to dub everything. They Lip already- and everything. That's really, but because I'm a singer, 
right? Yeah. And I hear things as music. So if that girl, who was also talented, just not the voice they sure. wanted, but if that person was like, a, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do, right? And that was the cadence of that line. Right, there was a tempo. I just said, send me all her tracks of her voice. And I, le- I learned it like a song. I mm. was like, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. And I'd go, a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. I just put my voice with her little cadence and her rhythm. Did you guys ever end up doing ensemble records? We did. When we first started doing Rugrats, we were in a small little booth together. This is when they had that office on Highland. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was the babies. It was Back then, it was Chris Cavanaugh, mm-hmm. who, bless her, passed away. But she was uh, the, the original voice of Chucky. And then it was Cass Susie, who does... Um, Phil and Lil, and she was doing Betty, and uh, myself, and Dill wasn't born yet. So in the beginning, okay. it was just those main babies. The new spinoff, are you, not, well, it's COVID, so you probably are recording by yourself. Well, Nickelodeon's not, are they union? Are you guys? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Oh, sure, sure. So sure. Back, okay, see, okay. back then, it was easier to do together because it was the beginning, but it also took a lot longer because sure. it was all three of us. So you're waiting, and you're waiting for them to perfect each line, and you're reading together, but... Then you're having to wait to make sure they get that line right and that line. And so in the beginning, it was that's how we did it. We sometimes were in there for four hours or six hours, which is oh, unheard of. It's a long of session. It's a long session. Plus, our director, Paul Germain, was very meticulous about how the lines were, which is why Rugrats was so good because they were so, they worked so hard to make it so good. And now it's great just because everybody knows their characters. We all know each other so well. We know how to work off each other. We know before they even say your line how they're going to say. I know how Phil or Lil talks so well that. Now I record myself in my home booth. Sure. Sometimes I go to Nickelodeon and do it myself, but everybody's separate because of COVID. COVID kicked yeah. around and they were like, we were record, we started rebooting and we did, maybe t- I started working with one other character and then COVID hit and then they were like, oh, That's they it. stopped for yeah. a while. And they were like, well, how's your booth? And everything was, so we were able to do them. Huh. Yeah. So now we do it separate. But yeah. So, okay. Because we were talking about the differences between recording alone and then recording as an ensemble and then COVID hits and recording an ensemble is yeah. obviously not obviously. even possible. Yeah. So uh, every now voiceover actor now doesn't have to wonder what it's like to record with an ensemble or alone because everybody's recording no. alone. And and we're lucky because like I said, we know each other's characters so well. Yeah. I know, I know how, how uh, Dill is going to respond. You sure. Know? I know how, you know, whoever, whichever character, I know how Chucky's going to say, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just know and I'll know how to respond. So it's fine. So I think it's time to get into some fun Oh, here. it's been so much fun It has already. been. Really? But now we got something fun that we do here on Party Other Voices. Time. So we are not fully up and running and interactive yet, but we will be our okay. next round. So one of the fun things that we're doing on I Hear Voices is that kids especially, anybody can, but kids especially are going to be able to Skype in and speak with their favorite voiceover actors and show artwork that they've created. And the voiceover actor gets to that. put a voice to I something that a kid has done. So Christy um, has reached out on her social media and has we've gotten some pictures from kids mm-hmm. uh, across the country. And we'd like, if you could, to pick one or two okay. at random. You got them already? Yeah. got them already. And then put a voice to some of the characters it. that we have here. And they do have the names of either the artist or the I love character. That. But it's so just, fun. We just love I love to, art when they do. And they're great. Yeah, some of these, I post the art a lot we're of getting them. is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. People will do a, a drawing of, they do these cool drawings for me and I post them because I'm so proud of the work. Right? Yeah. Oh, wait, are you picking or, or is he No, I was, just, I was just looking. Yeah. I was just looking. <laughs> I was <laughs> just looking. I was just looking, getting excited. I'm getting right, excited. Let's do it. Okay. Come on. All right, let's see what we got. I want to fan it out properly so she can really get all of the options. Wow, you're going to fan it out. Yeah. She's very meticulous. You're a fan go. girl. She is. <laughs> Indeed. I just pick it random. Anyone, anyone you want, pick it random. You can kind of see that one. We're kind of seeing that one. So maybe I should <laughs> do that. Let's there we go. One. What do we got? Oh, gosh. Oh, cool. That's really sweet. Oh, gee. So, now, the which... question is, which one are we voicing? I know, right? Maybe we should try both. I know. Well, yes. Can you? Can you? Well, first of all, is, Christy, is the, the name of the okay, person? Okay, I'll do her? each. Let's see. Is it okay, who? It says something. Um, Nia 20 something. Nia 20 something. Um, oh, Nia. But, uh, is, is Nia the character? Elizabeth. Is there... Elizabeth? Elizabeth is, oh, she's on a run. She left and she she's on is a run. starting her own podcast. Somewhere. Okay, yes. wow. It looks like um, I'll do both. A twenty-something uh, viewer of ours is really excited to see these. Uh, this this is scene. a beautiful painting. It's a great. It's great, isn't it? Look at this. We've gotten some oh, wonderful magic. pieces of art. We really very have. magical, I very dreamy. Could we show she... the ca- Could we show the camera too? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. So this camera. Here we go. So I would say that she would say, 
I really like the way the leaves blow when it's chilled, but I especially like the golden sun on my cheeks. That's how I would talk. Right? That was awesome. That was EG. perfect. EG, you're hired. You're hired. And now, EG. curiously, what would the dog sound <laughs> the dog like? Dog would be like, um, it's getting a little breezy. Um, uh, maybe we should lay down and, or maybe we should have a snack. It's that's in her bag. Awesome. The snacks in her bag. That's yeah. exactly oh, right. I don't know. That's what I do. That. Because like she, it's beautiful. It's magical. It's, it's magical. a great. It's a great. And she looks very zen. Piece yes. of art. Yeah, it's really lovely. Oh, Nia, congratulations. It reminds was... me of Avatar a little bit. It does, doesn't it? A little bit. That, that's the awesome. The background. So yeah, good job. Thanks, E. G. Yeah. So awesome. now, curiously, where can people find you? What so, What do you want to promote? Where can they find you? Okay, so are we what already got? at the end? I, I think could, we're pretty close. No, to that. Okay, yeah. no, we don't could do this no, for I'm five hours with EG and I'm still just leaving. scratch the no, surface. EG. Let's do a whole other Valley Girl podcast. Don't even get me started. Oh my god, that movie's so good. Uh, okay, oh, so you, but also too, you have a single coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, That's so yeah, we'll wrap it up. Okay. So yeah, so I did do a. They asked me if I wanted to be on a GoGo's tribute album because they just were inducted into the finally into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which well deserved. Yeah, they're such an awesome. All girl band who wrote all their st own stuff, played all their Amazing. own instruments that had a number one album Amazing. at the time. And Iconic. we're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is ridiculous. So they, yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, so that's awesome. So they asked me if I wanted to sing a song on this Go Go tribute album. This, and they're actually printing discs, which is really cool. Sweet. These particular, these particular guys. So I said, I would love to. And I said, Do I get to pick the song I want to do? And they're like, Yeah, which one? Of course, I picked We Got the Beat. Of course. So I recorded that song with my friend Lee Miles, who's amazing. And uh, we shot. We did a very fun kind of poppy, kind of pop culture-y little music video with the cell phone. Oh, that's awesome. So it's awesome. really fun. So that'll be coming out. And um, um, yeah. And then what else? I have a movie that's also pop culture called The Blonde Experiment that I did that Ooh. they're still in post-production. And I play um, um, Aquarius, who is a um, influencer. Pop, pop star and okay. I love that because that's Perfect. who I, See? You play, you're playing I manifested my own <laughs> you did. and I'm telling you I got to wear everything sparkly it was a role for my own heart and so that should at some point should be coming out and I got to um, do some music for that too so there's a song called So Pretty that they actually used throughout that oh, that's so awesome. cool. it's really cool and it's also going to be very pop culture it's really fun so fun. I don't know when that's coming out but it is in post production so and um I had a pilot called Beverly Hills Broke that I produced that's coming out that we'll, we're in just dropping mode. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And um, and you're on, uh, are you on Cameo? I am on you're Cameo. Sure you're on Cameo. Cameo. I'm on Cameo. And I'm hopefully going to be doing something with Anderson Pack, who's really cool and talented. Oh, oh my gosh, we love yeah, Anderson Pack. He's Pat. working okay. on something. I might be working on something with him in the in the animation realm. So cool. he's and super the talented. And the Rugrats. And Rugrats. Two. Rugrats, Rugrats reboot. Spin -off, the, the Rugrats reboot. A baby gotta do what a baby gotta do, and you we are doing so much fun. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah, so here we are, and then you can find me at Really Daily on TikTok, as we were talking about. Please give a follow. Yeah, just... Really Daily on TikTok and Instagram, because. We want more followers on Instagram because it seems hard, but mine's worth it, and you so know, is yours. Supposedly, just as a, as a sort of an aside note, if anyone is interested in getting more followers too on Instagram, you 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 sh you can, and I can and I can what? tell you guys how to do this. You got to use your reels that you're doing on, or your your videos that you're doing on TikTok. TikTok. You yeah. have to repurpose them by downloading them in a third party app called Musical Down. What? And then from Are you remembering there, this? Yeah, I'll I'll tell you, I'll tell you. And then and then basically you're gonna post those reels on Instagram so you don't have to redo them or anything. Or you can just read. <laughs> can you can you just save them, the videos from TikTok and then post no them? But then they're then they're watermarked. So, oh, I didn't so, know. That. But here's the interesting thing, Will, I understand that you can read. I get it. <laughs> some of us don't want to read. Some of us just want to be entertained. Not, not a good answer. Or we make sponsored content and it helps supplement our income. That's funny. That's okay too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So balance. there's a, a balance in life. You need a balance right, in though. life. It is. You, it you is. need a balance in but life. But listen, EG, EG, I think it's amazing that EG can utilize social media because oh, like yeah. people are finally getting to know her in a whole new way. Yeah. And she has so many stories to tell that like her content can become super iconic. Oh, yeah. absolutely. But and her content has already been iconic for decades at this Yeah, point. but these kids, they don't know it until it goes viral. Yeah. And some of mine have gone viral. Yeah. There's one with my daughters. It's really cute where you meet my daughters and they can do voices too. Yes, oh, they cool. can. Yeah, yes, that one can. went to like eight or nine million and I don't know what. It just blew up and then Complex put it on their page. It was really fun. There's a lot of fun stuff. But I like, because what I do on TikTok is some of my stuff 
gets in the millions and some gets less. But sometimes I post about like animals that I'll foster. And I talk about my animal activism that I do. Yeah, that's great. I want to make sure people Definitely. know like, yes, I want to promote the stuff that's fun that we all know and love, which is like the cartoons and the movies and the animation. But it's really important to know that I'm a human person. And I'll also post like, I posted that like, you know, my, I lost my Christmas, one of my little tiny dogs passed away. And I, I post things that are real. Like I posted that I was super sad because I want people to know like everybody has sadness. Everybody sure. goes through loss. And in the middle of like, I may be having some beautiful things going down in my life. There's also life stuff that's painful. And I want everybody to know like, it isn't always all perfect for everybody. We all suffer. And then the beautiful thing was when I was going through the loss of my dog at Christmas, it was Christmas Eve. And right. When I went through that, I didn't want to post about it till a couple of weeks later because I couldn't te- I couldn't deal with the sadness about it. I got to tell you, the fans' comments made me feel better. That's mm-hmm. nice. I the mean, engagement is made very me feel authentic. better. Like they were saying the most beautiful things. Like she's following you. She's right by your feet. Her spirit is everywhere. Mm, like things that made me feel so beautiful. So you feel the community. Oh, I'm all about. I get my, it. No, I mean, I get. It. It's just not for me. I get no, it. It's and no I think there's. It doesn't I have just, to be. For, I think you need a balance in life. And, as I, well, as, and, and I think if you can balance that with with. It's real hard. interactions with real people, it's probably, it's probably a better, more healthy for people. What it's do you hard. think, Ruby? I think um, you're actually like, yeah. <laughs> thank you, EG. And kisses, and kisses, thank there you, we go. Thank you so, so much. Thank you much so much for, for coming. My pleasure, you guys. Yeah. Nice. Sitting with you, it reminds <laughs> now me Now we're going to make a TikTok. You have to make yes. a TikTok. No, sitting with you, it reminds me of a quote that is sitting on, on my uh, fridge that I look at every day, and it says, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? That's my favorite. And it reminds, that's, EG reminds me of that. So you Do you really want to answer do. that question for me? Timeless. How old would I be if I didn't know yeah. how old is it? I got to be honest, I'm pretty happy with my age right now. I got to be honest, I really like- Are you really? I, yeah. I am, because I, I just don't want to relive my 20s or my you don't? childhood. No, I, no, no. I'm, I'm I, you know, again, I- I think in the 90s with Boy Meets World and all the shows I was on, I was probably quote Boy unquote more World. successful, but yeah. um, I'm way happier as a person now, way more w- well adjusted and, yeah. and in love and, yeah. in love and mm-hmm. supported. And yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just, I'm a better human being now than I was. So yeah, I yeah. like that. See, I like, I still feel like I'm 27. Okay. But you I look 27, love, oh, you look 27, yeah. Jeez. But I love the wisdom, the learning, the life stuff, the experiences of where I'm at, but I still feel like my spirit is like 27. So I have all of the best of, you know, I think it's all the best. It's like having that, my spirit, I can be close. With, I can literally, she's literally like my bestie, <laughs> Ace, my assistant. Like there, I, my spirit is like super, she's like my mom sometimes. I'm like, mom, she's like, AG, you're not supposed to do that. I'm like, fix it. You know? <laughs> but I just, I like, I like the wisdom of the age. Yeah, I love it. I, I and I, I like being able to teach people, but I also just love, you know, stay, just enjoy your life and do yeah. what makes you happy. And they say, what's my favorite thing? Is this like, find what you love and what makes you happy and go do it. Like just what makes you happy and go do it. Yeah. You That's know, whatever awesome. that is. Best yeah. advice we could get. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you so Ruby, much for coming out. Thanks you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, now they say youth is wasted on the young. Go prove them wrong. Bye everybody. I-